Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. A lot to get through, but I did want to start on Ida and sort of what's the state of the utility situation, the power situation in the storm's wake that you know of? Yeah, you know, the, the major utility that's been impacted is Entergy um, in Louisiana, and um, uh, Entergy is a very a great customer of ours. Uh, our understanding is that their big challenge right now is a lot of their major transmission lines, uh, particularly into New Orleans, have been uh, knocked down uh, during the storm. There's eight major transmission lines. It sounds like all eight of them are down. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, there, there are, are about a million people out of power. Uh, a lot of those people will probably be restored to power pretty quickly, but uh, there, there are going to be some folks that I think it's probably, you know, what, what Entergy has said is it's going to take up to three weeks to, um, you know, to get their power restored. And of course, Paula, it gives us, you know, a lot to think about whether it threatens consumer spending, if gasoline prices go up. When, you know, when these things happen, how long does it take to have a full assessment of how they can be back up and running? Generally, you know, you, Entergy's probably going to need two or three days to really have people on the ground and assess this situation. Keep in mind, it's a big challenge just to access some of these areas because of flooding and other, other you know, uh, leftover issues from the hurricane. So, you know, probably several days until they have a full assessment. And, of course, all of this winds up bringing into, like, the state of storage and the state of utilities uh, in this country, which is a huge, huge problem. Um, uh, Paul, your uh, relationship and agreement with City that you guys struck today, uh, it's about hydrogen build-out. Where do you see the growth? What are we talking about in the next five to ten years? You know, the, I, you guys had me on about a year ago, and I was talking about, you know, what we were doing to get ready for hydrogen at that time. We've actually just made an incredible amount of progress in the past year. Um, we've signed uh, joint development agreements with Entergy um, to, to help them uh, find uh, their pathway to net zero carbon emissions by 2050, which they've announced as a goal. We've also made a similar agreement with um, Puget Sound Energy in the Pacific Northwest. And then we've made a huge amount of progress on uh, a, the, the world's uh, largest green hydrogen production and storage uh, project called the Advanced Clean Energy Storage Project, which is going to provide uh, green hydrogen to the Intermountain Power Project. Uh, Intermountain Power is the last coal-fired power plant that's producing power for the state of California. It's going to be retired in 2025 and replaced with a power plant that has the capability to use green hydrogen. Uh, and then... One uh, last thing, we, we've announced uh, that we're working with Bakken Energy in North Dakota on the world's largest uh, blue hydrogen uh, yeah. hub. And, and so really, we, we've, we've identified all these early adopters of hydrogen. And what we're working with on, with City on is um, how are we going to stitch this all together and, and bring hydrogen to the entire North American continent? Right. Paul, when you talk about blue hydrogen, essentially it's hydrogen pr produced actually using fossil fuel. Is it actually more polluting than coal? You know, there's, there are reports out which, you know, if it, you can make any green technology look bad if you make a bunch of bad assumptions. I mean, for example, EVs look bad if you assume they're going to be powered by coal-fired power generation. Our project in, in North Dakota um, is going to be a very, very low-carbon project. Um, and so it does use natural gas as a feedstock uh, to produce blue hydrogen, but with very, very low carbon emissions. And then, of course, our green hydrogen projects are going to have essentially zero carbon emissions because we're producing hydrogen using renewable fuel um, and, uh, and electrolysis with water. When do you see um, the power for this to be economic? So when will power plants be able to burn hydrogen, especially in very competitive power markets like Texas? When does that happen? Well, here's the really interesting thing. We see green hydrogen as an energy storage technology. So it's not a fuel right now um, that's going to compete with natural gas or, or other fuels. It's, it's a energy storage technology that's going to be compared to um, energy storage technologies like battery energy storage. If you want to store renewable power for a long period of time, hydrogen right now today is the cheapest way to do it. And so that's really our investment thesis with green hydrogen right now is we have customers right now, like uh, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, which is a major off-taker from the Intermountain Power Project. Uh, they need right. to store renewable power now because they're curtailing renewables in the springtime because they have too much. And then in an extreme weather event last summer, they, um, you know, California came up short. Uh, that, that's what green hydrogen is going to do in the, in the near term. And then we're going to bring the cost of green hydrogen down dramatically over the next few years, and then it's going to be a competitive fuel um, and, 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 you know, essentially a zero-carbon fuel for 
many things, including power generation, right. transport, and, and utilities. What about blue hydrogen? So does the Biden infrastructure bill actually advance the so-called blue hydrogen, and should it stop doing so? Well, so we believe that blue hydrogen is an important uh, answer for, for some customers. Green hydrogen is going to be right for other customers. The, uh, the bipartisan um, uh, infrastructure bill that has just been passed in the Senate does provide for four hydrogen hubs um, with, with uh, two of those hydrogen hubs involving fossil fuels. So, um, uh, and, and, but again, fossil fuels with carbon capture to, uh, you know, to remove that CO2 from the process.